Taking out toys for Christmas, it wasn't always about Amazon, Walmart, and Target, of course. Giant stores filled with action figures and dolls used to be everywhere, including Child World. As David Wade shows us, it was one of the most successful toy retailers, and it all started here in Massachusetts. Child World, Child World, let's take a look and see. I'm Peter Panda. It was everything and more that a kid could want in the 70s and 80s. A toy store with shelves that were stocked to the ceiling. This is in Avon, Massachusetts, where Child World originated. Bruce Lane is a town historian in Avon. He's the man, not the bear. The bear, that's Peter Panda, the mascot of Child World. Hello, I'm Peter Panda. Welcome to my movie about toy shopping. Kids loved it, and I was one of those kids. And then here was Child World with Peter Panda wearing his bright shirt and his overalls, cruising in on his roller skates to tell the kids about all the new toys coming in. Child World was founded in 1962 by Sid Schneider and Joseph Arnasano in Quincy. Eventually, the pair moved the headquarters to Avon. And it wasn't just a lovable panda that made it memorable for kids and parents. If you went into a mall or a shopping plaza, you could see the Child World store before you even got close to it and read the sign. It was an unmistakable experience because Child World, the children's palace, literally looked like a palace. It looked like a castle. Stores that were white brick on the front facade with uh, red-topped turrets on them. Nothing else was like it. At its peak, Child World had 182 stores in the U.S., more than a dozen in Massachusetts. Everybody that, you know, my kids and all the other kids that grew up around here in the 70s and 80s, they went to Child World. That's where they get their toys. Plus, Child World used to put out flyers. They put out almost like a catalog for Christmas, which, of course, you know, like the Sears catalog, everybody got it and went through it. And this was long before the internet or anything, so. We're now walking into aisle five. <laughs> was piled to the rafters. And I remember I was at the Hanover Mall, <laughs> in the Hanover Mall, and that's where we'd go. You know, the hula hoops and things like that. And of course, if we had good report cards, that's where we would go to get our toys. Later, the company acquired Children's Palace to become the second largest toy retailer in the U.S., just behind Toys R Us. Darren Mukchin, who now owns three independent toy stores, worked for Child World. TV licenses, movie licenses, was really big in the toy industry back then. So any movie that came out from Jurassic Park or Ninja Turtles or Star Wars or Star Trek, all those licenses we built a whole brand upon because the kids were very excited about it. Darren says it was a magical time to be in the industry. Working at Child World for a period of time that was exciting that helped me even get more excited and want to do it even more. At one point, Child World was so profitable, legend has it, they would just throw out toys that were returned by customers. You know, and occasionally there would be the stories of somebody trying to sneak in at night and, you know, pull a Bobby doll or a G.I. Joe out of the dumpster. But the fun eventually came to an end when Child World, amid financial missteps, filed for bankruptcy in 1992. Child World, Child World, let's take a went away too soon. Early 90s, I don't think we're ever going to see that come back. But the senior editor of The Toy Insider, James Zahn, believes there's hope on the horizon. They're called Camp. They call themselves a family experience company, and they are really pairing retail with these experiences there are still new players in the game that are sort of working to uh, restore the magic if you will of uh, shopping for toys james says kids and parents need to seek out those small independent retailers who really care the toys is what i do and i and i know it and i and i still want to do it till the day i decide to close the store and walk out and bruce lane has plans for that peter panda costume because they're pretty rare. I actually saw one online, and they were asking $1,700 for it. I don't know who would pay $1,700 for one, but the, this one I got for nothing. And he hopes Avon never forgets its rise and fall in New England's toy history. And so I put him in a window with a candle, and Peter Panda's looking out over Avon. 
Bruce Lane says he hopes to have Peter Panda on permanent display at the History Museum in Avon at some point in the near future. And that new toy retailer, Camp, that was mentioned, there are just a handful around the U.S. at the moment, but one will be opening up soon at the Burlington Mall. I'm David Wade, CBSN, Boston.